get started. So today we are talking to Mr. Andy Wilson. Hello and welcome. And um, yeah, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, Andy? <laughs> well, first of all, good morning. Yeah. Good morning, Eric. It's great to be with you this morning. Uh, wow, you know what? It's what we're experiencing in the world is crazy mm -hmm. right now, but I'm very excited about what's going to happen, what's going on, and the things to come. I'm, I'm optimistic we'll learn so much from this uh, as a country as, and uh, as, as a nation and, uh, and, as, and, and as a business, a local business. And I am excited that, that we will get better, stronger because of what we're experiencing. Because we're great Americans. This is what we do. We're going to be strong really well. Agreed. We are great <laughs> Americans, Andy. We are. We are. It's a great it's country. American way. Right. <laughs> so so uh, what have you been up to during this, during this break? I know that we are on week six of working from home. So, right. well, you know, um, as, as uh, a lot of work I do is from home. And so, but what I miss really, really bad is I miss uh, hanging out with my friends, having coffee with them and doing things that I would normally do as a follow through mm -hmm. from working from home. Uh, so after, you know, like all of us, we found new ways to stay connected. Uh, Zoom is a great way. Uh, and so we've been doing a lot of, a lot of this and, and what the good thing is we're staying connected and mm -hmm. we're learning and figuring out how to do it. Uh, but one, you know, one of the things that, that, that we all find is extremely challenging through this event is how we continue business, not only our personal relationships, so how we continue business. And you know what? We're learning ways. We're adapting to it. And uh, that's what I meant. I think we'll get better and stronger. And there'll be things that will carry over to this that will even make us better communicators and business leaders. Hey, so Andy, what do you do with, you, you work with doing business in Bentonville. Right. What, that's what one you, of the things I do. Right. What do, you, what do you do with them? Well, you know, what we do is you, uh, where we have six events a year, three in the spring, three in the fall. We did not have those, of course, this spring. Mm -hmm. And we've adapted and adjusted to that. This fall, what we're hoping to do is launch in August. We've moved the date to August. And we're going to do, we're going to, we will launch in August, okay? Hopefully, it's the format where we're together, a group of leaders together, and we have a Walmart executive, other leaders there presenting and have a very open collaborative conversation about the topic. You know, that is really working really well doing business in Bentonville. If, if that, if we can't do it physically, we will do it virtually. Okay. Uh, and you know, that's what we're going to call on our friends like you guys mm -hmm. to help us learn and how to do that because you guys are experts in that. And that's one of the things you're experts in, but you know what, uh, Eric and Brooke, we will do this this fall. We will figure out how to way to do it, not only to, to, you know, one, share information, collaborative, learn from it, so we all get better as Walmart, Sam's, and the suppliers that support uh, those, those two companies and, and the companies that support the suppliers. We will come together virtually if we have to, and uh, we will get this done uh, and have a great fall season because I have moved so, we had a great spring season. I mean, it was all about technology and you know, that's changing the world. That's your, your guys' business. And, but we had so much, we had such great subject experts to talk about technology and how we're gonna use technology and use technology to change the world that we live in from a retail standpoint, wholesale standpoint. Uh, but we'll still do that this fall. Okay. And our goal is launch in August. Awesome. Okay? Yeah, yeah. We're looking forward to it. I hope we can do it in person. Cause I like, yeah, I like, yeah. well, I just like people. And then, and then, um, and then the breakfast is always delicious. <laughs> right. Got to have <laughs> I that. Look forward to the food. Yeah. I'm always, I always talk about food. How are you going to serve breakfast in your, in your virtual conference? <laughs> I, I, I don't, hey, I don't know. I, again, I'm just going to look, I'm just, I'm just going to talk to white spider and see how they do it. Then we'll figure it out. <laughs> hey, you know what? It might not be a bad idea, honestly, on that. It'd be really cool to have, um, Deliver it. Everybody that attends, yeah, like that they that. get a delivery of uh, breakfast to them. <laughs> and you can probably cream or something, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get yeah. a donut or something. 
And then yeah, I, no. we can help because, well, um, I have a farm. And oh, yeah. <laughs> we can help uh, with green. We have salad every, mixes. Give like every some podcast we have, yeah. Brooke has to plug the farm. I have to plug the farm. It's all about her. She's hey, using well, the buzz at White Spider. <laughs> take, to, we take, to we make take every business. opportunity we can. <laughs> well, look, Brooke, I don't have a farm, but I planted my uh, tomato and pepper plants yesterday. Oh, so there we go. Yeah. This is yeah. This is the time. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm actually seeing my seedlings grow. Yeah. Uh, uh, did some seeding so yeah. some seeds in my little seeding pot brook but the other day i was cleaning my garage and and it was sitting on this little shelf in the garage and i accidentally knocked it over two containers full of 72 mm -hmm. uh little seed pods themselves so i had two of them so it's like what 144 yeah. seed pods was fell on the ground now i don't know if it's okra tomato yeah i don't know i don't have any idea it'll, it'll you'll know when they when they grow yeah. Yeah. I just plant them plant them plant them go for it i don't know how you know i mean whatever it's fine right. as long as right. it gives you vegetables ruin my day ruin my day <laughs> So yeah. what, what have you been up to during this thing? I know you said that you were, you were uh, biking a lot, and that's exciting. Right. I am. You know, one of, one of, one of the things that's, that's really great is that, you know, we can still, we don't ride. I ride with a couple of large groups and part of a couple of large groups, cycling groups, in Northwest Arkansas. But, you know, we're like everyone else. We're, we're social distancing. And so what we can't do is ride in large groups. But, like, me and a buddy went, yesterday and and uh, we we uh, called it the tour of the seven cities so we we rode all the way to be uh, north of Bentonville and and rode through seven different cities in northwest Arkansas almost 100 miles and we you know and we did it together we kept our distance but it was a blast we had a great time it's a beautiful day we got to see you know see what's going on and let me just tell you something there's a lot of traffic and a lot of people out Okay, yes, yeah. I'm telling you, man, it was crazy. You know, we said, Oh, we're gonna have these roads to ourselves. We haven't even close to have those roads to ourselves. It was yeah. I don't know how you can sit in the saddle that long. I've most yeah. I've ever done is like 50 miles, and I just I can't tolerate it. Like, I'm more yeah. of a sprint rider than I am a distance. Rider. Yeah, I've been riding long distance for a long time. I yeah. think that's it. And, um, and you know, the but the the thing that's a blast is 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 uh, uh, now that was fun yesterday, but but gravel riding is something new that I've gotten into, and you know you, now that's really you, you can be alone on the gravel, just you and the dogs and the. Birds. I was gonna say the dogs. <laughs> yeah, and, and so, uh, that's been really uh, that's been a lot of fun. Again, it's usually one or two, three of us that goes, and we're real careful about all you know about that. But uh, it's been a lot of fun out in the country. You know, it's so beautiful. And we live in a beautiful area. When you get out on the gravel roads, uh, no matter what direction, uh, uh, it's just beautiful out there. And you see the farms and uh, you see the hardworking farmers and they're out taking care of their, you know, their property and, and their animals. And so it's great to, to slow down a bit. Yep. And we've been able to do that and enjoy our area. We live in, as you all know, we live in a, we're blessed to live in this beautiful area. Yeah, and uh, we just have some wonderful people that are working really hard right now. Thank so, you Andy, you, you, you spent a long time at Walmart, right? Right. How yeah. many years did you work at Walmart? Uh, well, I worked 25 at Walmart, and then yeah. additional 10. Uh, you know, Don Soderquist uh, was vice chairman at Walmart. Yeah. And um, the late Don Soderquist now, unfortunately, but. Um, uh, after Walmart, Don and I, we started a comp uh, organization called uh, Sodaquist Center for Leadership and Ethics. I've, I've attended that, actually. John Brown University. Yeah. And we formed this group, and uh, it, it grew to a pretty large group. And we worked with companies around the world with leadership and ethics. Yeah. And we worked with many. Uh, we worked with Walmart around the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we worked with many of suppliers and support groups of Walmart, you know, especially uh, in in Asia and in different parts of the country, really helping helping those companies get better, helping Walmart get better uh, internationally. So that so if you add all that together, it's a long time. Uh, yeah. But it was it was a wonderful career. 
Yeah, that's, I, you know, I did not realize that you were uh, part of the, the Sodica Center. Uh, right. Superb organization and, right. and a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of value that it was delivering. Um, so, I mean, man, that, that just kind of opens up a lot of questions from my perspective, right? I mean, this, is this going to be a leadership podcast, Brooke, now? Whatever you want it to be. Let's do it. <laughs> It's Let's whatever we want it to be. That's what's great. Well, so, I mean, because there's, I have a lot of respect for, you know, for the Sodico Center and of course for Don and, you know, and, and everything that does. I mean, it's, um, I mean, after all that experience that you've had, what, what, you know, working with Don, I mean, what would you say, you know, were some of your key takeaways from just a leadership perspective from, you know, I mean, I, I guess you could say that it, apply that to our times today, right? Mm -hmm. Say you are a small business owner right now. Let's take a restaurant business, right? Because sure. really, restaurant or you know, I'm gonna even say you know, workout gyms, anything that's been kind of really shut down right now. Right. How would you, what, as as a uh, the entrepreneur or the the business manager of those organizations, what what would you say would be great leadership advice in this window of the last three weeks? We got another three weeks coming, right? of you, you know you haven't been able to serve the community or you serve your business really it's been in lockdown you know hopefully it'll start opening up pretty soon but you know that's a good span of time that there's probably from a lot of your uh, leaders there's some an anxiousness you know and then you got employees and folks that you're taking care of family i mean how would a good leader how could a leader step up in this situation because that really i mean with all these things there's a lot of threats right right with every threat, there's opportunities. Mm -hmm. And so I think that we might see some really strong leaders rise up out of this circumstance. Right, right. What would you, what would you do? What do they need to do to be successful, Andy? What's well, the key? I mean, I, and look, we can, we can well, sell. No, I, I think it's a great question. And uh, uh, and if just a couple things come to my mind, we can we can build it out. But number one, uh, I think if, if any business leader, big or small, Number one, respect your people, uh, respect the individual you know, that, work, that, that you work with. Now's the time to look outside yourself as a leader, look to your people, to look out to your people and say, okay, how do I take care of them? How do, how do I provide for them? You know, they're hardworking, they're dedicated. Now it's my turn to give back. What does that look like? So, so gather your people close. You know, if you're a large company, gather them close, and you still can today. You know, virtually, and you're through your through great communication. So, so respect the individual. And I think the second thing that leaders have to do is learn that you know change. How are you going to change? How are you going to learn to change to get better? You know, one of the things that we said at Walmart for years, and Sam taught us this, that the most consistent thing at Walmart was change. We, and I think that applies to small businesses who can adapt and change quickly. We've seen that happen. You know, we've seen companies go to curbside pickup. We've seen them go to online ordering. We've seen them, we've seen uh, restaurants sell all kind of food. You know, I drove up to a restaurant the other day and they had, had, they had like a food mark set out under their sidewalk. They had cases of vegetables and fruit and all kind of things I would need, basics, flour, you name it. And they, they'd never sold that before in Buck, right. but they, but, but this was a Mexican restaurant and it was, it looked like a market. That's awesome. That's change. See, entrepreneurs can change so fast. Yep. And I would say, so take care of your people and be and, and change and adapt. And if you do that, you know what, you'll figure it out. You know, give give me so one thing that comes. Sorry, Brooke, I have. That's fine. I have that's officially fine. taken over the podcast. I know. I'm like, that's fine. I'm gonna have to put my laptop in. <laughs> You're welcome, yeah. Brooke. You're welcome. I know. <laughs> so when I think of yeah. Sam Walton, Don Soderquist, yourself, you know, other great leaders, Doug McMillan at Walmart, right? You know, and and I'm fortunate and blessed to be part of a you know a small business in in you know in a big industry. Right. I mean, obviously it's different for Walmart, big business in a big industry, but, right. but the amount of pressure and kind of ongoing stress that, you know, all the leaders at Walmart would face. I mean, what, and, and then now you have this, this time period, right? Right. 
how do those leaders, how do you as leaders, how do they handle and process through that stress, right? In these uncertain, you know, in, in any, I mean, really business is uncertain constantly. There's not ever a certainty in business period in, in the leadership role, but what are some of the, 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 the skills, the principles, tactical things that they would do to manage the day? Right. You know, we, all, all, we all have the same amount of time in a day. Mm -hmm. How do they individually manage that time? Well, I'll just go back to what Sam Walton taught us, okay? Because we had many crises we faced, not like this at Walmart, but but I ran a, I ran HR for ten years, and I in a year I dealt with a lot of crises around the world, no question. But what Sam taught us is this: you know, an organization is made up of really talented people, really smart people, or they wouldn't be there. And that's the time you surround yourself with your people, and you ask them what they would do. Now it's time for your people to step up. And that's what Sam would do. He'd gather us in a room and say, here's the issue. The best ideas are in the room. Sam always taught us that. And now that's when the leaders that have sat quietly or stayed in their little circle or stayed in their cubicle is to step and lean into the issue. Because sometimes the, that, that person, that one idea is yeah. the thing that would trigger all, you know, this path forward and and I would and that's why I said number one you know keep your people close in a crisis keep them close listen to them because they are closer than the leader to the issues right they're, they're in it every day working on it listening to their customers or clients they know the real problems and and so bring them close and Sam would do that. When we would have an issue, he would bring leaders close to him, and then he would listen. We'd set a plan forward. We'd set a timeline. And then this is the other thing. We would start working really hard. Hmm. We, we were always harder on ourselves, and Sam was hard, uh, harder on us. So along with that path, find ways to celebrate. Yeah. Find, find, you know what? Hey, we are moving forward. This happened today. This is this happened this week. Let's celebrate that. Let's pause and celebrate, and let's and then then from there you 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 just like restore the energy back. Go again, restore the energy back. Go again. Stay focused on the issue, and and that's why I said earlier in the opening. You know, um, uh, you know, uh, we leaders and people step up to this type of issue, mm -hmm. and the answer I believe is in the room. With yeah. your people, Eric. That's what I would do. So it sounds like to me, like, okay, well, there's a lot of entrepreneurs out there right now in an SR community and across the nation. That if they are the sole proprietor or they're heads of the of the organization and even investors, etc. What you, it sounds like what you're saying, based on on your experience, is that as a leader, you might feel all that weight on your shoulders, right. but. And, and, and the natural thing is to take that on. You become stressed. You become a little frantic and, and all these things, right? Everything right. compounds. Right. But the good practice would be to take that and, and lean back into the team. Right. And that will help. I mean, that, and, and then you just build that trust in the team to, to, to yeah. take, take those things off your shoulders. Now everybody's carrying equal weight. The best right. ideas are in the room. Trust, lean on the team and then trust in the team. Listen to the team. Right. and activate against those things right that because the, because the leader can make those decisions quickly and get above all the bureaucracy or whatever it takes and if you don't do that as a leader my experience is that i when i have not done the things i just said and and i've learned some of this from my mistakes i sure. become paralyzed yep. as a leader yep. and you you don't want to become paralyzed as a leader because that's when it shuts down you know, and when I am, when I, when I was faced, you know, when, especially when I was running HR at Walmart, the things that I, I tried to do is not have a headline. Okay. Because the headlines aren't good. And you should, you know, unless they're good headlines and they usually aren't good headlines, especially running an HR department that size. <laughs> so my, my role is to surround myself with really good people. And then, you know, I had, I had, I was able to then, get those ideas and then take those in this case in this structure higher up in the in, in organization 
And, you know, that's where I built such great relationships with Don Soderquist or David Glass or others, because I would take them, these are s some solutions and mm -hmm. you present the solutions, great leaders empower you to go back and you and your team go back and really now execute those, you know, those uh, solutions. And, and, and you just can't stop. You can't become paralyzed. Right. You know, and, and leaders get paralyzed. I get it. You know, that's good stuff. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm really, you know, I'm, I'm trying to think of like, you know, if I was running one of my favorite restaurants, it's Marabella's table. I just love it. I mean, <laughs> Is that I mean, why I, you got I, engaged there? Is why you proposed? proposed there. And then, you know, we, I mean, I, I just love that place. I miss it actually. <laughs> when I drive by, I'm like, man, I really wish I could go in there and just hang out. And uh, they got good Wi-Fi too. <laughs> like I'm going and I'll, and I'll, and I'll poach a seat for, or a table for two hours working. And they, they still accept me as a human. I can have it. I don't feel pressured. But anyway, um, you know, if I was the owner of that business, I can't help but think in, about folks in those circumstances, right? Like, I mean, there's, there's got to be a lot going on in their heads, right? I mean, their patrons, the people. Right. And, 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 and even doing business in Bentonville, right? Those businesses are based on the gathering of people. Right. Which this whole situation, you know, prevents. But you know, it's those critical moments. And like you said, you can become paralyzed with just, there's options here, you know, but you take this and we'll risk that, right. you know, and I mean, what would you, okay. So like, let's say somebody, let's say I'm the owner of a Maribel's table and this owner hasn't done it yet. What would you tactically say, like, wake up this morning, what would you do? Like if starting fresh, like forget the past of whatever we've done in the last four or five weeks, would you call a Zoom meeting with all your staff? And Absolutely. Like, give, us a, give us a practical thing like that. The first thing I would do uh, is that I would, I would research what other competitors are doing mm -hmm. because you can learn from your competitors yeah. and you should learn from your competitors because there are a lot of great ones and learn every day. And what you want to do is then take those ideas as starter points and then call a meeting, a Zoom meeting, say, you know what? I've looked at four competitors uh, or uh, other, and if you don't want to call them competitors, the other businesses in the same business we are and say, this is what they're doing. Now let's talk about that. How can we take one idea and improve on it? Mm -hmm. And, you know, and the key is improving on that idea. Um, you know, we used to say at Walmart all the time, uh, we still shamelessly, and we did, I promise you, we did. We looked at a, a lot of different competitors and then we'd take that one idea and say, let's execute that better. And that's not a negative. Let's just figure out a better way to do this. That's more adaptable to us. You know, one, you just, all you need is one idea and that starts and, and you get your team involved in like we were talking about, and this thing can move pretty fast. And you can change, you know, pretty quickly, especially you know, if, if you're an entrepreneur in a small business and you don't have a whole lot of, you know, uh, a bureaucracy, but go, you just got to go. And, and, and then you, you, you make a mistake, you back up, you go again, don't stop. You know, that's, that's the entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneur spirit. Yep. Uh, and, and I would just encourage you if you're, if you, if you're not doing that and you're a small business owner, you know, Let's get going and, and don't quit. There's, gotta, there's so much learning through this. So you have that meeting. Let's do a follow-up, right? I have that meeting. I, have, I get my competitors, have that meeting, get some feedback. We start working. What do I do tomorrow? Do I follow back up and Absolutely. check? Absolutely. Okay. Keep talking every day about it. How far did you get? What do you need? What can I do for you? You know, what can I, how can I serve you today? What, what do you need me to do to help you? And then you, as a leader, what you have to do is remove the barriers because you can remove the barriers, right? You know, and don't hesitate in this time to, to call, to call the, uh, your elected officials. I mean, I emailed Senator Bozeman the other day. I had a question about yeah. something. I emailed his team. I got a response back less than 24 hours and it helped me. Okay. That gave me an idea. And so reach out to your elected officials, to the people in your cities, 
and 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 senators, all of that. Now's the time. Yeah. And 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 just but as a leader, you've got to remove the barrier for your people. You know. You know, Andy, I really see. Man, thank you so much for that. I mean, because I think that in the midst of the storms, right? I mean, it doesn't matter the situation or whatever. Any time in business, as a leader, you get kind of you do get in a paralyzed situation. But these are great tactical things. It's like, it, it, you know, in my experience when I do get paralyzed, I spend way more time than I should have in my paralyzation versus <laughs> taking an action. And so I was wanting to get something tactical. Like if next time that I might feel paralyzed. Hopefully I can retain this, maybe watch this podcast again, maybe pay $10 <laughs> send for it. Uh, send like, here, here. In my credit card information. You need this today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure you will, Brooke. I Just will. accidentally <laughs> send it. Uh, include the rest of the team so I don't feel like it's directed towards me. Okay? All, that, yeah. all those things that you need to think about me emotionally. Yeah. <laughs> but, but hopefully I can get back in and just, in, you know, because a lot of times, I mean, one of the things I think as an entrepreneur that's so important is when there are so many things going on, entrepreneurs have an ability or, you know, to, to kind of rest in you know, in the, in the midst of chaos, like they're able to right. kind of sleep in a storm and that's a really great trait. And, but being able to do that, come back to a practical and tactical thing. And it could be simply just set up a call, just like you said, and then that will, con that will reverse that momentum right. or at least cause that momentum to go. Right. Uh, uh, but I really think that we're going to see some outstanding entrepreneurs rise up out of this certain circumstance. Yeah. So do I, I, I believe we will. Yeah. And I mean, I, mean, I said it earlier, I think we'll get stronger as a country, as business leaders. We'll, be, we'll get stronger from this. We always have. We can't stop now. We can't give up. we got to move forward. Yeah. What are you? So, uh, next question, Brooke. I mean, you can just, you just we, we hang are, out over there. We are at the. Hey, Brooke, I'm going to have to plug minute, the laptop in. <laughs> so, we, we have about eight minutes left. So, okay. all right. We should have a little power. Right. That, gives me, that gives me some time to ask my next question. Bit of time. So one more question, then we'll wrap it up. Great Thank questions, you. Brooke. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm like, I just, I'm just here. I just hang out. Thank you. Thank you. You're moder You're 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 monitoring and moderating. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's really good. It's good. This is really good stuff. So yeah. Sorry, I get excited because I don't have much time with Andy, man. And, <laughs> you know, and I'm going to take full advantage of it. Uh, so. Let's let's re, let's turn it over back over to doing business in Bentonville kind of thing. You have, uh, I mean, what are you hearing from Walmart, right? Like, what are the leaders feeling, sensing at Walmart? I mean, what's the 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 mentality there? Is in in how does that lead into the supplier community understanding? Like, I think one thing my experience in supplier community is is understanding clearly Walmart's initiatives their ambitions their reaction to this right because they can follow their lead and 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 really kind of capitalize on on, on the circumstances if they can understand that right right a little bit better right well i think number one i'm here from walmart is that the leaders are trying to be servants they're trying to be out in the stores clubs as much as possible uh, and, and 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 appreciating the the front line those those cashiers yeah. The stalkers, all those people, those people that, that are doing pickup, delivering your car, all of that. I think number one, they're doing that. Secondly, you know, their new challenge is trying to drive so much business so fast, especially on the food side, and then keeping that in stock. And they're working night and day for that. I mean, you know, they're the people are, are trying their best, working with all the suppliers and the truckers, you name it, not only the Walmart trucks, but the the other carriers stay in stock. And you know, overall, they're doing a fairly good job. Is yeah. what I what I see. And I've been trying to go to Walmart about once a week, uh, put my mask on, go in, just and and, and then thank the associates that I run into, uh, staying distant, distancing. But you know, really just trying to look to see how they run their business. And I I, I really think overall they're doing real well. Um, so and then you know, keeping their stores clean and 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 mm -hmm. and providing you know now you know the store so many people in the store, which I think is a very smart move. Because that does two, two things: it protects their associates and it protects the customers, each yep. other. So I think that's really well done. Um, and it's inconvenient, yes, but it is okay because 
it's the right thing to do during this, this kind of time. So I see overall them working really hard. They're driving tremendous, uh, tremendous amount of business. And as a supplier, how do you support them? How do you help them, you know, and, uh, and step up? Because everyone has to step up here. It's a real team effort. And, and um, you know, uh, I, I think overall it's going, going well. Eric, I really and I commend I commend the associates uh, in the stores, and you know, and of course, you know, not you know, of course, not our stores, but the key our healthcare providers too. Not, but all that's going on on the front lines around the around the country and the world, that everyone is stepping up and leaning into this, and um, and so as a small again back to small business, how do you do your part in that? You know, how, how do you step up and lean in there? You may not be saving people's lives like our nurses and doctors and healthcare providers are, but you, but you are helping in your community. And, and, and I've seen this huge support of buying local, you know, yeah. and that's everywhere. Uh, and what a great idea. I think that's, that's one of those things that's going to stay. Yeah. You know, so if I'm a, if back to that small business owner, if, now is your moment to be great. Now is your moment. In a crisis, is to be great. And you say, well, I can't because I don't have everything. Be great in that space you determine you're going to do. Be great at that. Because that is what's going to keep you connected with that customer after this. Those things that you do to serve that customer now. So if it's, if it's curbside pickup, be great at it. If it's quality of food, be great at it. Be great at the packaging, you're taking it home. You know, all of those things, follow up. You because you you have their information now. You got that customer's information. Follow up with that All of those things now, just decide I'm gonna be great at what we do now. And and I think if you do that, it sets the bar really high, but I think that gives you the follow through. Brooke, it'd probably be a good idea to end it right now before yeah, I really... we are. <laughs> 